Hey everyone, and welcome to The Year Was, the podcast all about today that gives you just enough information to effectively be that guy at the party, causing all your friends to question, hey, who invited you? Like, seriously, why are you here? I'm your host, Michael Montalvo, and for the next few minutes, we will swim through the river of time to try and find out what makes today truly unique. In this episode, we examine the events that occurred November 3rd. Anyone that listens to this thing that I make every week knows that I like space. I like the idea of space. I like the idea of space exploration. I like films about space and stories about space, and I like personal space. And so, I always jump at the opportunity to talk about things related to space. How far did I jump? Not as far as you might think, honestly. The thing to remember about space, though, is that not all space stories are good. And we have witnessed that with Apollo 1 and 13, not to mention the Challenger and Columbia, both not yet mentioned on the show. And these are only a few of the disasters that have occurred in mankind's quest for greatness. To talk about this week's episode, which I continue to pretend you don't know despite clicking on this episode's title, we must first go back to October 4th, 1957. Some of you will know this day as the day Sputnik was launched into space by the Soviet Union. It was the world's first artificial satellite, was the size of a beach ball, and it started the space race. It ushered in a new series of scientific development and discovery kickstarting the space age. So now that the world had entered this brand new era of exploration, the next logical step was for man to go there and explore it. But was it safe? To answer that, we have to go back a little bit more. As we know, animals were the initial test subjects for the journey into space. First was a pair of fruit flies in 1947, which made it back unharmed. Then, in 1949, a monkey named Albert II was launched into space, but died on the impact of returning to Earth. In 1950, a mouse was launched into space, but it also did not survive the encounter. The Soviet Union launched dogs into space in 1951 and managed to bring them back alive, so the United States, not to be outdone, again sent a monkey who survived but died awaiting recovery due to the heat. Basically, both countries had gotten pretty good at sending things into space, but neither had managed to spend a significant portion of time in the space. None had an orbit of the Earth. That all changed with Sputnik. And then, it changed again. The year was 1957, and on this day, November 3rd, the first animal to orbit the Earth, Laika, the dog, was launched aboard Sputnik 2. If you noticed, they sent Sputnik 2 only a month after the first Sputnik. So to go from unmanned orbit, or rather, unanimaled orbit, to animaled orbit in that short a time was really something crazy. So who was Laika? She was a Siberian husky rescue dog taken from the streets of Moscow that was volunteered into the space program. The reasoning behind getting a dog off the streets was... Scientists assumed that the harsh conditions such as hunger and extreme cold would be a benefit to traveling into space because of their adaptation and familiarity with the conditions. They reasoned that the only thing Laika would not be used to would be the rocket, the trip into space, the small cage that she would be kept in, and the gel that would be her food for the voyage. So really, only like 70% would be unknown to her. To prepare for the trip, Laika and two other dogs, Albina and Mushka, were gradually placed into increasingly smaller cages in order to prepare them for the confines of Sputnik 2. They were also made to go through a series of trials that were very demanding and underwent frequent medical examinations. When the time finally came for the Soviet Union to choose its newest cosmonaut, Vladimir Yazdovsky, the Soviet space leader, chose Laika because she was quiet and charming. Yazdovsky would later write, Laika was quiet and charming. I wanted to do something nice for her, 
she had so little time left to live. The Soviet Union, as well as the United States, had managed to successfully launch objects into space. What they hadn't quite mastered was having them orbit and then return to Earth unharmed. Or at all. Sputnik 2 had a lot of equipment designed to keep Laika alive. It had been built around her and had been equipped with an oxygen generator and a heat-regulated fan. But it only had enough food for about seven days. And for not having a plan to bring her back, this was more of a problem than you might think. Some say that Laika died when the ship's oxygen ran out. Others claim it was poisoned food and that she was put down. The official cause of death was due to a failure of the ship's temperature controls sometime on the fourth orbit. However, according to an article from Time, an official from Moscow's Institute for Biological Problems leaked the allegedly true cause of death, which was within hours after takeoff, due to panic and overheating. Whatever the cause, Sputnik 2 continued to orbit the Earth after Laika's death and would not re-enter the Earth's atmosphere until April 14, 1958, where it would burn up upon re-entry. The Soviet Union would go on to send more dogs into space, including Belka and Strelka, on August 19, 1960, and these two dogs would be the first animals to orbit Earth and then return safely home afterwards. The space program would continue, and would continue to send more animals into space before taking the plunge and sending Yuri Gagarin into the unknown. Laika was a pioneer in space flight, and is still remembered to this day. In 2008, a monument was installed outside of Star City in Russia, where Laika trained. The monument depicts a rocket that turns into a hand, holding Laika as if rocketing her into space. That's going to do it for us today. If you like this podcast and want to hear more, give us a rate and a review. That helps me and helps steer this in a direction that is hopefully good for all. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find the Year Was audio version on your podcast app of choice. You can find me on social media and at YouTube at the Apple Cider Club. And as always, I want to thank the Tim Kreitz Band for our musical theme. And thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.